Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Keswick Chapel. I'm Pastor Robert. Today is Sunday, May the 16th. We're coming to you from Whitney, Texas, more specifically from my mom's place, which is really two-tenths of a mile closer to a little bitty lake called Lake Aquila. When I say two-tenths of a mile closer, I mean literally we're about two-tenths of a mile south of the lake. Lake Whitney is about five miles from here. Uh, blessed to be down here for my mother's birthday, celebrating her 80th. So uh, we're going to be looking at the way of Jesus is the way of consequences. One final look together here today. I encourage you to grab your Bible and pen and paper. The notes that you've taken from this week, we will review those. We'll look to see if we're able to add anything. Or maybe the Holy Spirit will just point out to you something that you have missed we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. I'll be reading from the NIV this morning. Our three theological affirmations as a reminder of these. The way of Jesus is the way of practice. The way of Jesus is the way of the rock. And the way of Jesus is the way of consequences. Join me as we read together one more time this passage from Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it was had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew against it and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning thanking you, first of all, for your word. We thank you, Father, for your love for us and your grace. And so as we settle into these few moments together, Father, we ask that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear your truth from your word. Help us to be receptive in our hearts and minds to these truths that we may grow in grace today. And then, Father, I pray that you would help us to leave our time together determined to go forth and to practice these words of Jesus. We love you. We thank you for this day. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. The way of Jesus is a way of practice. What does Jesus mean by practice? We looked at this. We need to be listening. It's right here in the very first part, the first couple of verses. We need to be listening to God's word. We need to hear his words of instruction and then obey them. Put them into practice by taking action. Whenever we learn anything new, we need to pay close attention to the instructions that we receive. So whether we are new Christians, older Christians, it's not enough to merely listen to the words. We need to actually take action upon them. Whether it's sports, we talked about sports, jobs, and school. There are rules and basic things that we have to learn. And there are skills that are required. There are policies to follow. There are requirements for our work, for our sports, and for school. I take classes in preparation for ordination. And when I take those classes, there are rules, there are requirements that are put on me in order to complete the course of study. So we learn by doing. We don't learn by listening. It's amazing how we can just think sometimes that, well, I heard what he said, but we only find out what we really know when we put things into practice. The learning anything new is a process. It takes time. How much would all of us love to shortcut that period of time necessary to learn something new. So we know that we cannot, right? We know that it takes time to learn something. And part of the learning is putting into practice. 
what we hear. James chapter 1, verses 20 through 25, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. James tells us that we cannot merely be hearers of the word. We must be doers of the word. When we start doing and we start acting upon what we hear, we are actually developing the deeper memory of what it is that we're learning. We're actually de developing greater skill. And every time we practice, we get better at what we're doing. And not only do we get better at the doing, what we've learned actually goes deeper and deeper and deeper into our hearts and minds where it eventually becomes a very part of us. This is exactly what Jesus did. When we look at Luke chapter 2, verses 39 through 52, and I encourage you to read that entire passage the, the bottom line of it is, is that Jesus is in the temple at 12 listening to the preachers, the priests in the temple, engaging with them in God's word, learning from them, asking questions. We need to ask questions. We need to be bold and ask the questions when we don't understand things. And the reason for that is is because this is how we engage in the learning process. I want to encourage you to do that. We know that Jesus practiced because he had learned enough of God's word to know questions to ask the priests. We know that he practiced exploring the Bible. We know that he practiced prayer. We know that he practiced community. We know that he practiced worship. All of these things help build a solid foundation, help us to build upon the rock. And that is our second theological affirmation for this week. Jesus is the way of the rock. We look at Matthew chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, where Peter has just confessed that Jesus is the Christ and that Jesus tells him that only the Father could have revealed that to him. And in so doing, Jesus also said, upon this will I build my church. And we talked about last Sunday and throughout this week that there are commentators who say that the position of Peter as the head of the church when the church initially began was what Jesus was talking about. There are those commentators who believe that it was merely Peter's confession of Christ as Savior that Jesus was talking about. His faith is what Jesus was talking about. And in any case, we know that Jesus is the rock of our faith. He's the rock of the church. And Jesus intends then and now to build the church upon our faith and upon the work that he completed. So, when we look at what Jesus did, his practice, we see that Jesus applied the spiritual disciplines of biblical exploration, of prayer, of community, of worship. A couple of other places you can refer to are Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49, and Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. And go back here to verse 24 in our passage, and let me read it again to you. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. What do we hear there? We hear that Jesus says that by putting into practice what he says, we are like the wise man who built his house upon a rock. So there's two contrasts here in this verse, in these, in these verses, 24 through 27. The first is the wise man who takes action, who practices what Jesus teaches. And then the man who does not put into practice what he hears from Jesus. And Jesus likens that man to a man who builds his house upon a sand. When the storms of life come, 
when the winds blow and the rains drive hard and the streams rise up. The man who built his house on the sand, his house falls like a house of cards. It's destroyed because it has no sure foundation. We need to pay attention to that. So we've looked at the way of Jesus is the way of practice. The way of Jesus is the way of the rock. And now the way of Jesus is the way of consequences. And we just talked about the two different consequences that are faced by whether you obey Christ or you don't obey Christ, correct? Now, let's talk more about these consequences. Understanding God's judgment is a consequence of putting into practice what Jesus has taught. Remember, we look at the whole of chapter 7 from Matthew when we talk about these consequences. We learned about being able to understand God's judgment the discernment that leads us to God's judgment, avoiding judgmentalism, being able to recognize false prophets, understanding the difference between the narrow path and the wide path, hearing the Holy Spirit whisper to us as we learn and grow, all come from building our spiritual foundation upon the rock who is Jesus Christ, and putting into action our faith. And our faith will grow from following Christ's words and practicing what he says. The last consequence, the positive consequence, is that through our obedience, our relationship with God grows, and we learn to live a holiness lifestyle, loving God and loving others. The second consequence is actually negative consequences, right? The things that happen because we don't, straight up, don't choose to believe Jesus. Don't choose to act upon his word. Those are that we never understand God's judgments. We will have a lack of discernment. How can you discern what you do not learn and know? We will very likely walk around in a condition of judgmentalism all the time, constantly judging other people and being judgmental about what they are or are not doing. Not practicing Jesus' words will subject us to hearing the lies of the enemy, the enemy of our souls, and accepting those lies as truth. And then frankly, we'll never be able to obey God because we're not listening to his word. There's no way you can follow what you do not listen to. There's no way that we can learn if we do not accept Christ's words and follow him. These actions have both intended consequences that we just talked about, both from practicing what Jesus teaches and from not. And they have unintended consequences. The unintended consequences, those are really harder to qualify. However, you and I both know that sometimes we'll say something, not meaning anything harsh or critical by it, and yet those words harm someone. They bring pain to them. That's an unintended consequence. So there are intended and unintended consequences in our choice to follow Jesus or to not follow Jesus. We looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15, where Paul was talking about himself as an example to the church at Corinth regarding this foundation, building upon the rock. And he said this, that he laid a foundation as a wise builder. And in going on through that passage, and I encourage you to read that, he says that no one can lay a foundation other than the one laid by Jesus Christ. That's the first thing. The second thing, that what we build in this life, what we build spiritually, is going to be brought into the light of day one day. 
then it's going to be tested in fire. And only what survives the fire will stand. Everything else will be burned up and destroyed. And he says that when it's burned up, we will suffer the loss of what we've built. What I'm wanting to do here with this passage is I'm wanting to encourage you that there are reasons beyond just merely listening to God's word and attempting to take action. What we do as Christians is going to be tested one day. And that testing is going to be by fire. And it is either going to withstand the fire and come out refined, or it's going to be burnt up. In another passage in Matthew, Jesus tells us to not lay up treasures for ourselves here, where moth and rust destroy, where it can be stolen, but we are to lay up treasures in heaven where neither moths nor rust nor thieves can destroy our works. Christianity is not works-based, it's faith-based. But when you go back and you look at James again, James tells us that we have work to do in our faith. It's these works, whether we're really doing them for Christ, whether we're really obeying Jesus, this is the crucible that the works are going to be tested in. Why did we do what we did? Did we do the things for Christ really, truly for Christ and for his church, or did we do them for ourselves? That's a whole other lesson. What we're talking about today is the way of Jesus is the way of consequences. We looked at practice. Jesus himself put into practice what needs to be done. We need to put into practice. Grasshopper, sorry. We need to put into practice the spiritual disciplines necessary to grow in grace, to become stronger in our faith. Jesus said that we need to follow the way of the rock. Well, Jesus is our rock. He is the cornerstone of our of our salvation. He's the cornerstone of our faith, and we need to be building upon that cornerstone. We need to understand that there are consequences by our actions. We either move forward and grow, a consequence that we're looking forward to, right? That our faith gets stronger, that our relationship grows sweeter, or we choose to ignore Christ, and therefore there is no relationship, or the relationship that we once had begins to diminish, and we get further and further away from Christ. Christ wants the very best for us, my friends. The question today is the same question it is every day. Which way are we choosing? Are we choosing to follow the way of Jesus that leads to life everlasting? Or are we choosing to follow our own way, the way of the world, which leads to destruction? I pray that as you go through this Sunday, that you will continue to chew on this word, that you will be encouraged by what you're learning and doing in faith, the doing is an example of our faith. It doesn't save us. It doesn't get us into heaven. However, we work in the body of Christ and we work to share our testimony so that others may understand the unsurpassing beauty of God's love for us. I pray you'll have a wonderful day, my friends. I love you guys. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.